pig foot sauce. If you're looking for a chicken foot version of this, you can go to CaribbeanPod.com or YouTube.com slash CaribbeanPod. I have here two pig feet, which has been cut up into pieces. You gotta get your butcher to do it because he's gonna use a saw and you're gonna get a nice clean cut. So I got about 12 to 14 pieces there. And I'm gonna go in with a juice of half of a lemon. You can use lime. It's just that I have half of a lemon left in the fridge there. So that's what I'm gonna do. The other thing, and we're gonna give that a good wash, a really good wash with cool water and, and clean it all nice. Now, what I want to mention to you, and let me see if I can find an example here. Like, um, hmm. Well, anyways, you wanna take a, ah, see, prime example. You wanna remove this sort of skin, get rid of that. And if you see any hairs, what you want to do is get an old disposable razor and just pass and remove any sort of hairs that may still be left back on there. The reason being is nobody is trying to eat pig foot with hair on it. It done kind of off key as it is already. We are trying to encourage that now, but I'm going to go through and wash that really well. Sometimes I forget that the videos are seen by a global audience. When I showed you the razor and I showed you the, <laughs> the pig's feet, you're probably wondering what I mean. So the skin side, so this is the sort of bone and fleshy area here. The skin side is where, and I'm gonna do it on all the pieces whether I see the hair or not, because once it's boiled, the hairs may come to the surface, anything that's just sitting right here. So that is what I meant by using that disposable razor. See, there's a piece over here, I gotta, Pull out as well too. It's nice and clean, so now we got to um, you know, tenderize this. And to tenderize it, I mean we got to boil the rokutung tungs out of it. If you have, and this is one of those few times, you know, Uncle Chris is not a lover of a pressure cooker. I have a couple downstairs. I don't ever use. Yo, they just collect and dust. Anyhow, I like low and slow on the stove. So. We got to add some flavor in here and I've got some scallions that I just gave a rough chop to. I've got some fresh sprigs of thyme, some crushed garlic, and that is just about six, uh, five cloves of garlic that I smashed with my knife. Give that a good dose of black pepper. And later on, when we start to put everything together for the finishing touches, we will add some more black pepper. That is sea salt. And the final thing to add, that je ne sais quoi. Strongly Caribbean, some Caribbean green seasoning. And Caribbean green seasoning is just a puree or a sort of a blend of all the herbs we like using in our meals and our dishes and preparing our dishes in the Caribbean. And you know, it's not just herbs, but we've got garlic and seasoning peppers or pimento peppers in there and everyone's recipe or version of Caribbean green seasoning will be different. If you're interested in my version, you can head over to CaribbeanPot.com and the recipe will there be there for you. And that low and slow I was talking about is we need water. So I'm just gonna top that all the way up. Maybe just about a half inch off the top of the pot there. If you wanted to add more, a big, put it in a bigger pot, you can certainly do that. Later on, I may need to add more water. It's starting to come up to a boil. So as soon as it does, what I'll do is I'll reduce it to a simmer and we want to cook that until it's nice and tender as I said. So later on if you need to add some more water, feel free to do so. Pali, it's night it's it's nap time for Pali, so I'm gonna leave it. Sim 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 simmering away there. As the pig feet boils away there, I've had to add another couple cups of water into so far. I wanna show you a little old school trick I saw my mom would always do. So after peeling the cucumber. What she would do is take a fork and she would run it, well, you, you would go deep enough that it makes an impression on the skin, on the outside of the cucumber. And then when you slice it, I don't know if you guys can see that, there was always a little design on it there. Yeah, that is old school for you right there. Tell me you know old school, that is old school. And speaking about old school, what she would also do, she would cut the stem off with just a tiny bit of the cucumber still on it and she would do some circles like that 
And if you've ever had bitter tasting cucumber, give this a try. All you would do, and I've already done it here, but you don't need to do it on the underside. It's where the stem is. You would trim a piece off and you would hit him some circles like that. Then give it a rinse, and that is what I did at the top here. Just gonna give that a, you know, old school again, old school again. It's been going for an hour and a half. I'm gonna give it another 20 minutes. You know what, let's round it off. Two hours in total, I'm gonna boil it for. Then I'm gonna drain it. And I'm going to, yeah, you can save this if you want. If you, I, I don't know, some people say you can make soup with that. I ain't really no kind of big time to stop there, but you can toss that out. But what we really want is these pieces of pig feet now. Yeah? Yeah. So the pig's feet have been boiled, nice and tender, drained, rinsed thoroughly, and it's sitting on the side over there. The other ingredient, and it's all about texture and flavors and all that stuff like that. So we've got cucumber, we've got shadow belly or culantro. If you cannot source cilant um, culantro, get cilantro. I've got half of an onion, sliced really thin, two scotch bonnet peppers, and listen, I I like it spicy. If you don't like it spicy, you don't have to make it spicy. But what I would recommend you do is cut it up, cut the peppers in into slices that people can identify. So yeah, later on when they're eating or drinking this, whatever means and format they like to go, um, they'll be able to identify it. Some celery over there and garlic. You know, some people put garlic in it, some people don't. Some people crush the garlic. I love garlic, so thin slices, really thin slices of garlic, and we're gonna use the juice of one and a half limes. So I've got one already sliced, I'm gonna slice the other one there. We'll need some more salt and we'll need some black pepper and water. So let's assemble it now. Assembly time, so we're gonna hit it some more of that black pepper. We're gonna to toss in all that scotch bonnet pepper in there. Go in there, partner. We need you in there. Got all of that lovely thinly sliced onion. I notice the peppers are really thinly sliced as well. Gonna go in with all of that cucumber. And the more cucumber you have in here, the better because everybody getting a slice and a slice and a slice. Time for that shadow benny. Remember, if you can't get shadow benny, or it's also called culantro, you can use cilantro. It's totally up to you what you can source. And that celery, and again, it's finely chopped, and I'm gonna use mostly the leaves, a little bit of stock, but um, it's gonna give it a wonderful flavor. My thinly sliced garlic. And if you wanna crush the garlic, again, you're in control. Then we're gonna hit it with that lime juice. and a bit more salt just to compensate for all the other ingredients that we put in there. Remember we boiled it in salted water, so yeah, um, be mindful of that when you're adding more salt. Now we're just gonna top it up with a whole bunch of cold water. A lot of people like this sort of liquid here more than anything else because it's, it's gonna have all that flavor of the cucumber, the scotch bonnet, the garlic, the shadow benny, the celery. So um, be mindful of that because you're trying to cheat people on the, um, the proportions, you know what I mean? So we're just gonna hit that a nice little stir like this so. And you can see it coming together. Yeah, boy. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Sup, soldiers? Listen. If you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm mean, trying to tell people the email address, then butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, hi Irene. I hear that a quick taste for for salt, it does need some more salt. So I'm gonna adjust the salt on that. I'm gonna add the other half of the lime as well. So in total, two limes. So I wanted to have that more pronounced citrus flavor. What you have to do now, 
stick this in the fridge and allow it to consume it. Consume just means to sort of marinate in there. So a couple hours, we're gonna put this in the fridge and we're gonna let it sit for a couple hours. Then, you know, it, this is probably the only sort of, I guess you can call it a soup, a cold soup we have in the Caribbean. Now, if you go back, 12 years ago, I originally shared this recipe with you all. So if you want to head over back to CaribbeanPod.com, you will find it on there. But anyhow, Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com, allow it to sort of marinate and do its thing. Remember to adjust the salt on it and enjoy. It's like a cold soup, a sort of a pickle. Yo, adult beverages and pig, t pig foot, <laughs> I almost said pig tail, pig foot sauce. Yo, you can't go wrong.